I am getting so tired of this, literally so tired of watching this kind of football. But before we go into the Jets' loss to the Bills, they're third in a row. They're now two and four. Their season is spiraling completely out of control while the new coach is going to look, take a hard look at things, the things that we've seen for the last three weeks. The officiating is absolutely ridiculous, man, for both sides. Like, the game is unwatchable. Every other play is a flag. I know the Jets had 11 penalties for, 100, I think, 110 yards. Those were the accepted ones. They probably had five more that weren't even accepted. But the game, it's just like, it's a tough watch to begin with. But the game starts and the offense comes out. Everybody wants to see what's the difference going to be with Todd Downing. Will this will it have be more direction? Will they be able to run the ball? And surprisingly, the Jets' offense actually moved the football. Garrett Wilson and Aaron Rodgers looked like they were back in sync. The, the, the uh, passing game was more fluid. Brees Hall was getting big splash yards. He had over 100 yards rushing. Lazard and Garrett Wilson had a, a, over 100 yards receiving. But good teams find ways to win, bad teams find ways to lose, and the New York Jets are just a bad team. They are drastically overrated by myself and a lot of other Jet fans and even analysts, as collectively they're just not a good team. So the offense, while it's much improved, has so many friggin' problems and makes so many mistakes that they're to the point now where Aaron Rodgers can't carry them or overcome them. The offensive line is a mess. Tyron Smith, as he's a Hall of Fame player, has ridiculously struggled for this team. He's getting torched. He's getting burnt. And if he's not doing that, he's committing major penalties on the goal line of all times that are just hurting this team. The team will never bench him because they don't want to play Olu now. It's a problem. But instead of leaving him on the island, how about you give him some help? Morgan Moses has been banged up. He's struggling over there. He's doing the best he can. There's too many guys running in free. The holding calls. Aaron Rodgers is giving the ever-living shit beat out of him. If the Jets did win this game, the way they're letting Rodgers get hit is not sustainable. It's just not going to work. So you have offensive line that's not consistent. The passing game, when the Jets did have success, they were passing the ball effectively to set up the run. Still no Mike Williams involved. I know the play happened late in the game, but he's not being effectively utilized. Still no use of Conklin. For whatever reason, they're going to Rucker in big spots. He's not contributing. But the offense still put up almost, what, 40 yards of offense? The offense did enough to win. But it was just crucial penalties at the worst possible time to always set him back. So that's a problem. Then you have the kicker, where the, the Jets were one, were one for four in the red zone. And it's like goal line, the goal line play calling makes absolutely no sense. I've been begging for a fade pass to Mike Williams for about a month now. That doesn't happen. Then, the, you know, it's like the one Brown Allen touchdown worked. They had a holding call for no reason whatsoever, which is just like, you, it just, there's no rhyme or reason. Like, they just can't get out of their own way. They literally can't. So right before the half, they had the Jets got lucky that the Aaron Rodgers threw a Hail Mary at halftime and Alan Lazard remarkably caught it. Lazard will make two incredible Lazard made two incredible catches tonight, and then he'll drop an easy one, which is maddening. But the halftime half Mar Hail Mary saved the Jets. Because they're on the verge of getting blown out. So you had a glimmer of hope. Fine. The defense is in utter disgrace. This team talks like they're a great defense, and they have all these social media posts and top five, this top five, that. They got absolutely manhandled all across the board on every level. The Bills came in. You knew the Bills were going to run the ball. They ran it down their fucking throat whenever they wanted to. The Jets couldn't contain the edge. They couldn't, they couldn't tackle. They couldn't wrap up. They couldn't do anything. And it was embarrassing. Like, And then you look at a guy like Kinlaw, who had like three penalties, just laughing on the sideline. Then, then these guys are getting personal fouls for like roughing the passer in crucial spots. They're undisciplined. They lack... They lack it, Gap integrity. They lack everything. It's like, it's just, you, you're watching it. Like, what are we, like, it's just, you're just disappointed and disgusted on every level. There is no pass rush at all. Nothing. And when they get to Josh Allen, then there's nobody even, there's no spy to cover him or they're missing a tackle or taking terrible angles. So they obviously miss Jermaine Johnson drastically. They also miss John Franklin Myers and Sheldon Rankins and anybody else can stop the run because they can't do it. It's just, I just can't believe what we just watched. There were so many missed opportunities here where they, if you look at it, where it's like this team, if they were even just fundamentally sound, they win the game by 10 points, but they're not. So when the offense falls short in the red zone, then they bring in the kicker and he misses two field goals. And if anybody hasn't watched my videos since the preseason, he, he looked iffy in the preseason. He missed a kick against the Patriots. We said, is this the thing to worry about then? He missed a kick against the Broncos and now he misses two tonight. So he should be cut. It's like a relief pitcher when he loses his fastball. He's got to go now. But the bottom line is the Jets are they're done, man. They're just not a good team. 
Like, this is a seven or eight win team. You know, right now they're not getting Devontae Adams. And then why does Devontae Adams want to come here for a two and four team that can't get out of their own way? He wants to go to a winning franchise. He'll probably go to Bills, maybe the Ravens. He's going to go anywhere but the Jets. The Hassan Reddick thing, who cares? It's too little too late. The team, they're running out of time. Like, they're like, oh, we're going to take a hard look at this, a hard look at that. You're, you're a heavily penalized team once again. You self-destruct once again. And with the game on the line, when the defense has to make a stop, it can't. It gives up points. Then the hope is maybe Aaron Rodgers can save us. Here's a newsflash. He ain't saving anybody, man. Even he cannot overcome what the New York Jets are, a losing franchise. So now it's going to be winding out another season, watching maybe win this, maybe win that, scratch and claw for seven or eight wins, feel good about yourself, and blow it all up and start all over again. And here's another thing. Don't tell me about Mike Vrabel and Ben Johnson. And Ar- They're not coming here. First of all, they don't, nobody wants to coach for Woody Johnson, nor should they. Second of all, there's no quarterback. Aaron Rodgers won't be here, and you're not going to have a top five pick, top ten pick. So where's your quarterback? What's this, what's this great package you're going to offer to this prospective head coach to come here? Meanwhile, you have a lot of guys in the last year of their contract, and your superstar players are probably tired of losing, and they're not going to want to be here. So look, we're talking the same old shit all over again. Tonight was a mess, man. Like, you look, I feel bad once again for the fans that go to these games and you watch a penalty riddled, disgusting, sloppy mess. And it's it. Like, I'm tired of seeing the Jets social media posts, one Jets drive, all of it. I'm just fed up. I'm disgusted. You want to see quality, good winning football sooner or later, and we're not seeing it. Three losses in a row, two of them are at home, and they go play a Steeler team on the road. And I don't, like, it's just. I know teams that come back from two and four. I just don't see it. They are just not a good team. And that's it. So I'm probably not giving you a good recap. I'm disgusted. I'm tired. I could be at work in four hours.